Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Yokohama Duel, which is a sequel of sorts to designer Hisashi Hayashi's excellent Yokohama, which is, I cannot stress just how great this is as a big economic Euro simulation. But now, Hisashi Hayashi has brought us Duel, which is a two player only sequel. And so I'm going to be showing you how it works today in a two player run through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Yokohama, everybody. What was once a sleepy, peaceful fishing village has now become a bustling center of trade as Japan has opened its doors to the rest of the world. And you've got opportunities to learn new technological breakthroughs from other countries and cultures. You've got uh, the opportunity to make donations to the church, which can really help out a lot. And also, you're probably going to be spending a lot of time trying to fulfill orders for goods. As part of setup, each player draws three order cards and keeps two. So these are the two I've got. I need some copper, some silk, and some tea to get six victory points and an import good, which could be worth points also. And my other order is I need some tea and some copper and some fish. I chose both of these because once I get good at getting tea, well, I'll probably want to get more tea, so I'm going to kind of focus on that a little bit. And that's if I stick to the order fulfilling route, because there's lots of other ways to score victory points in this game. There's you so many options. But anyway, each of us has our starting orders, which we keep secret. I am the first player, which means I start with three yen, and I've got one of each goods. Jen also has one of each of the four types of goods, fish, silk, tea, and copper, but she starts with four. And also, I start with one extra power card, and Jen, to make up for being second player, starts with two, and that's it. We're ready to go. How does it work? Well, this is a worker placement game, and our workers come in the form of these four power cards. And oops, I have not reset mine. I need to set them up because I have a level one, a level two, a level three, and a level four. And uh, as you might imagine, the uh, stronger one of my assistant cards is, you can see there's a one, two, three, or four guys I send out to do work. The more guys I send out, the better they're going to do at all these different locations. But there's a problem. I must send out my uh, lowest level guy first before I send out the next one or the next one or the next one. So that can be a little bit painful. I guess, you know, it's quicker. A guy by himself, he can get out there first thing, whereas getting four Four guys together is going to take a little bit to get them out and about. So I have to make my first worker placement action, and I'm not going to get very much done with this guy. And so what do I want to do? Let's see here. Well, there I could come to the copper mine, or the fishing ground, or the tea plantation, or the silk mill to get more of the basic resources uh, that are central to the game. And remember, I do want to get some tea because I've got two contracts that need, I need a total of 14 and I've only got one. So maybe I want to come over here to the tea, ta tea translation where I will get exactly one tea. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to do that. I think, I think I would like to invest in some technology right out of the gate. And that means I come to the laboratory. All right. So I have put my worker here and I will now do this action. And currently, like I said, my worker will do a one strength action, which means I've got level one technology available to me, and that's not good enough. If I look at what's available, uh, the spinning mill requires two. The university and mining technology require three. Um, the telephone and tram require four. So this guy's not going to get it done. But if you look here, I can increase his power by spending either two yen or one of these import goods tokens, which I don't have any. I do have some money though, so I'm going to spend some money. I got to spend money to make money, folks. So I'm spending two, and that means this guy's actually a level two instead of a level one. If I had two more bucks, like Jen does, because she started with four, I could increase him to a level three, which would give me access to those. Also, if I want to make him stronger, I can use my extra power card. When I send a worker out, I can have one of these extra power cards go along to help out. So that means this guy could be a level two or a level three if I'm willing to spend. And uh, it might be worth getting a level three depending on what's available. All right, ooh, the university is very, very cool. That's going to save me, what's that going to save me? Three, four, five bucks? 
yeah, that's going to save me five bucks over the course of the game if I if I if I grab it right now because it makes upgrading my power cards because each one of these power cards or I'm sorry these power cards can be upgraded at the end of a round. Uh, this this one is is upgrading for free to turn them from a level one into a level two, but. Turning my level four into a level five, well, that's going to cost me three bucks. If I get a university, I can upgrade my guys for free. Although, I'll only get to do it three times because we're going to have um, four total rounds in this game. I guess there's four years that this game takes place over. So, I will get three upgrades for free. That's pretty cool. Although, if I only want a level two, I can get the spinning mill, which means once per round, I can jettison a silk to get two more two more yen which could be really handy over here say uh let's see um i can't afford the telephone that's for technology i fundamentally cannot get that and this is one that once around lets me pay a yen to increase the power of one of my workers that's super awesome although i also need these yen to build buildings so that's um that's great if i've got a lot of cash on hand I could get the mining technology if I go up to level 3, and this is whenever I go to the copper mines to gain copper, I get an additional one. And that's a big deal because copper is the toughest resource to get. As you can see, you need at least three level, a level 3 worker to get over here to get a single copper. So picking up more copper, that's pretty awesome. How much copper do I need? I need three copper and I've only got one. Now there are other ways to get copper besides the copper mine, but that's pretty nice. You know what? I think I am just going to go on ahead and use my card. I'm going to save my cash. Um, so that's only going to get me to a level 1-2. I've spent that, and that means I can afford the spinning mill. Or that's it, the spinning mill. And I will take the spinning mill. All right. And I now have a power for the rest of the game. Once per round, I can give up silk to get two bucks. All righty. Sweet. And uh, now, that was the main portion of my turn. Uh, actually, both players get this little player aid here. It also doubles as a player board because as part of setup, I was supposed to put all my little shops on all these spots and all my trade houses on all of these spots. And I keep track because this is a reminder to build a shop costs one, to build my first trade house costs four, second one five, third one six, fourth one seven. There's also some other reminders here, including most importantly, a handy dandy cheat sheet. Uh, to walk me through my turn. The first thing I do on my turn is what I'm doing right now. I'm doing an area action. I'm uh, going to the laboratory and I am getting spinning mill technology from some you know other foreign country that has you know brought this to uh, Japan and I've learned it. The second step is I can potentially do a power bonus step. The third step is I can build a shop or trading house, potentially. Now, I don't always get to do those. But in addition to these three steps, I can do free actions like fulfill orders once I've got all the resources I need, hire a foreign mercenary, use a foreign mercenary, or use a technology card. Hey, I've got a technology card. I think I'll use it right now. Um, and I'll just flip this over to indicate it's used. I only get it once per round. I'll get it back in my in the second round, the third round, the fourth round. I'm going to spend that silk and get two more yen. So I'm rich! Rich, I tells you. I now have more than enough money to build a trade house, which is something I'm definitely going to want to do. So that was my whole turn. I did the area action step. I skipped the power bonus and the shop building. And I skipped this because I can't do them. You will notice on any one of these locations, there's a different reward for getting there with level one, two, three, four, or five. But you'll notice um, the four and the five are written in red instead of black. That's a reminder that if you make it, if you do a level four action, however you do it, you know, with like your last guy of the turn, or you upgrade some of your other guys or whatever it might be. If you do a level 4 action, you will also have the opportunity to spend money to build a shop or a trading house. If you do a level 5 or greater action, you will, in addition to being able to build a building, you can also pick any one of these power bonus cards to take and get all kinds of rewards too. Now, at the beginning, because we have to send out our little guy, who isn't very strong, it's going to be a while before we can get to those unlocks, potentially, but we'll see how it goes. So anyway, that was my turn. I did my main action. I had to skip these two because I didn't have a powerful enough guy. And I did one of my free actions, which was using some tech that I had just gotten. I am done. It is now Jen's turn to send out her little level one. 
And now here's an interesting thing. This is a regular worker placement game for all of these spaces because once somebody goes there, no one else can go there. However, the lab and the port are different. You can see there's this little infinity symbol. That means any number of players can go there any number of times. I could have all four of my guys go there and get technology if I wanted, and that wouldn't stop Jen from coming here. So if Jen wants to, she could get some tech as well because I've left four behind. And the interesting thing is, Jen started with two extra bonus cards, although you can only only use one per turn. So Jen could turn this guy from a, a, a level 1 to a level 2. If she spends all her cash, uh, that's 2 plus 2, she could go to a level 4. She could do a level 4 action right out of the gate. Um, because um, you, because you can, and, and that means uh, she could get the telephone, she could get the tram, she could get any of these remaining technologies. And here's the deal. At the end of the round, any of these technologies we didn't pick up, they're gone. And five new ones will come out in the second round. In fact, there are 20 technologies that come with the game. And you shuffle this deck up as part of setup. You, you'll always see all the technologies, but you never have an idea of what order they're going to be in. And that can really change up the feel of the game. So, I totally forgotten what um, Jen has. Right, so Jen, um, she needs to fulfill her two contracts. Well, she needs two T. Uh, she has one T, one fish, and she does have, actually, one um, silk as well. She could complete this right now, which isn't going to do much for her except give her four points. If she can complete this, it'll be worth five points at the end of the game, and it gives her another one of these extra power cards, and it gives her import goods. So, is Jen going to chase after trying to get this thing done? Well, she needs one more copper. And remember, coming to the copper mine is tough. You need a level 3. Jen could level her guy up. No, she couldn't. Uh, he's a level 1. Uh, at the copper mine, you can't spend money. You can spend money or import goods at the lab to get more powerful. But in most places, you can only get more powerful using your extra power cards. So, Jen cannot go there right now. But that is interesting. Jen is tempted to come here to pick up this thing that if she goes to the copper mine, then she gets additional copper. Because again, copper is the toughest thing to get. Is she going to do that? That means she'll be a copper powerhouse, and she'll wa probably want to, at some point, go to the port to get more contracts to um, sell more copper and score more points, etc., etc. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Um, you know, or instead, you know, Jen could just take it easy, send her worker out, and just start getting some resources. She needs um, a silk. Actually, interestingly, Jen knows I like silk. I want to get silk because I can convert it directly into money without having to spend a worker to do it. So Jen says, ooh, you like silk, don't you? Well, you know what? I think I'm going to get some silk too because she needs a bunch of silk. So Jen could send her level one over here to the silk mill. And a single won't do anything, but if she pumps it up... That'll be two. Two power, one plus this one, means she gets one more silk. Which isn't great. I mean, she ultimately needs three silk for these, but she has blocked me from getting silk. And she knows I want that silk, um, because in the second round, I'm going to try and convert that silk into money. So she has stopped me from doing that. All right? All right. Say la vie. All's uh, fair in uh, love and war and worker placement. So that was Jen's first action. We're now on to the second turn of the first round, and we've gone up to our level two guys now. And I cannot bump my guy up anymore, but Jen could still bump her level two up to a level three. Now, where am I going? I was actually going to go and get some silk because I just wanted to kind of corner the market on silk. Um, particularly because I can't complete this order without silk and I've used silk. Ah! But you know what? I do need a lot of tea. I need a lot of tea. I've got my level two guy here. If I come over here, I'll get two tea. That's almost enough to complete both of my orders. Mmm. Although on the flip side, I got a level two. I've got one, two, three, four, five. That means I could turn this level two into a level four and get another tech if I want to blow through all this cash. And remember, if I do a level four action, not only do I get to do a powerful version of wherever I go, but I also get to build a shop or a trade house. And it would cost me four to do a level four action here. I'd have one buck left over. Ooh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm all about tech all the time. Because remember, the tech and the port are the only places where players can go multiple times. I'm coming here again with my level 2, and I'm bumping him up to a level 3, and then a level 4, 
and I'm broke, but yeah, I can get any of these. If there were any level 5s out, I couldn't get them, obviously, because I didn't pump up enough. Um, right. So do I want the tram, which once per round, I can um, I can activate a used area. Jen thought she stopped me from getting in there, but if I've got a tram, I can get in there anyway and get all the silk I want with one of my big heavy hitters. Um, let's see. Or I can get the telephone. Once per round, I can spend a buck to increase. No, I mean, I'm thinking a little, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get the tram. Alrighty, this is my second tech that I have invested in. And um, now, like I said, uh, after I do the action, uh, if I did a level 5 or greater, I'd get one of these bonuses, but I don't have that. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the shop or trade house building. I have one more buck. It cost me one to build. And boom, I have now made an investment. I have a shop in the lab district of Yokohama. And what that means is any per worker I send here in the future automatically gets plus one to his strength. And the stronger they are, the better. Also, this uh, house is worth one victory point to me at the end of the game. It's one of many things you can score points for. All right. So, yeah, I, 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 I overpaid a little bit there. Um, but, you know, the thing is, Jen could have gone there and picked it up just as easily as I could because, oh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Um, she doesn't have a level two. That's a mistake. There are level one and level two powers. These are much harder to get. I, I messed it up wrong. So Jen has her second level one power. All righty. So, I mean, Jen could uh, send her level two plus this plus some money. She could have picked that up. First come, first serve. And um, now I can still get that silk if I want. So what is Jen going to be up to? Right. So she, um, so to complete this contract, she's got the tea, she's got the silk, she doesn't have the copper. A level two won't do her anything. A level three would get her one. But again, ah, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm seduced by the siren song of technology. Yeah. Oh, it's all tech all the time. We're kind of setting ourselves up. I'm good at certain things. Jen's going to be good at certain things. Jen is sending her level two, and she will spend um, her last extra power card to go to a level three to get mining technology. Okay, nice. Although, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Jen, uh, so Jen's just tipped her hand, and the way that she blocked me out of the silk I wanted... I am going to be the next player. I could immediately block her out of the copper that she wanted, and she would get no love for that thing at all. Ooh. Oh. Didn't think about that. Didn't think about that. There is a lot to consider here. I mean, the game gets very tight very quickly. She can get the university as well, which is... Okay. She wants that? She's not going to take it. She's going to go to uni. Um, which, remember, I talked about this one earlier. This means at the end of the round, she gets to do a worker upgrade for free instead of spending money. All right. So, although she did a level three, if she had done a level four, she could have built, even if she only took a level three card, a level four would have still let her build a uh, shop here as well. So she could be more powerful in tech in the future also. And, you know, I mean, and she could have gone. I mean, she could have spent two of her four yen. And then if she won, instead of the university, she should have gotten the telephone. Oh, man. Um, each player can have only one shop in an area. And a given area can only have one trade house. So once somebody's built a trade house, another player cannot build a trade house there. Yeah, all right. Does she put a little bit more in to get that? Because that'll make it easier for her to get tech for the rest of the game, even though she's throwing a yen away right now because she likes that university. But remember, that university is saving her five yen over the course of the game. Oh. Hmm. What is she going to do with this cash instead? If she had one more yen... And uh, then, instead of building a little house, she'd rather build a big house. Because, remember, the, the little shops that are worth one victory point at the end of the game, the big houses, they're worth five victory points at the end of the game. Plus, they also increase your strength in a given area. Plus, if you visit one of your trade houses, or actually say, if anybody visits one of your trade houses, you get more money. So the sooner Jen could get this on the board, so rather than you know blowing money so that she could build a little house now, she's saving up, but she did want this university... That was not what I was going for. She wants that mining, but she knows if, if she takes that mining, I will block the copper mine because I've got a level three. I'll go there and get a one. Oh, she wants it so much. She wants to complete this contract, but you know, it can wait. It can wait. It can wait. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But before she's done, she was saving up to try to do this contract, but now since she's afraid, although man, this is going to disappear. Ah. All right. She'll save up for guests. She'll get the, uh, the copper some other time. 
And in the meantime, Jen's going to do a free action. She is going to fulfill an order. The first one to do it because she had this really quick and easy one she could do that just required one silk, one fish, and one tea. And so Jen has done this. It's worth four points. And I'll just put it over here as a reminder that she has done one contract. Because doing a, doing several contracts the same way as doing um, uh, getting several technologies or making several donations to the church or getting several of these import goods is a worthwhile uh, thing to part to chase after because remember one of the free actions is hire a foreign mercenary to hire a foreign mercenary you have to complete one of these objectives as soon as i have three tech cards i get a foreign mercenary as soon as i complete three orders i get a, a foreign mercenary so jen has completed her first order she completes two more um, orders she gets one of these these are awesome they are level three workers that cannot be blocked they can go anywhere um, and they are like a bonus extra turn you get to take. So they are super cool. All right, so Jen just went for that. She's locked in four points for herself. She saved five bucks off of this. She hasn't built anything yet, but that's okay. She's still got a lot of cash. I am plum broke. All right, and she needs to keep refilling. Although maybe she'll never do this because she could always just come to the port and um, try to get some more orders that might be a little bit easier to fulfill. Right, uh, my turn. We're up to the big... Level threes, uh, three handy assistants are going to go out somewhere in the world. And you know what? I could come here again. And with a level three, I could get that mining technology. But it's the same game of chicken. I know if I get it, Jen's going to go on ahead and, you know, freeze me out of that copper mine. I kind of wish I'd gotten it right off the bat when Jen would have had to pay dearly to try to freeze me out when she was still her level one. Say la vie, say la vie. I mean, I don't even care about that. I mean, all right. Yeah, all I do if I want to complete these, but that's not necessarily what I'm going for. Right. So I've got some tech. But oh, if I get one more tech, I will have three technology cards and I'll get my foreign mercenary. And I could use it before the first round is over. Although you can save them up and use them later. Do I want to get either of these techs? Mining or the telephone? Although I can't get the telephone. This level three guy. Oh no, remember, I've got a house here. So this level three is efficiently a level four. It's all tech all the time. I'm sorry, folks. I want to show you some other stuff, but hey, um, you know, kickstarting your uh, your uh, industrial endeavor with some technology never hurts. I'm a level four. <sighs> right. Okay, that's fine. I'm a level four uh, because of three plus one. I'm gonna get. Am I gonna get the telephone? I don't think so. This is turn money into extra work. I mostly I just want to do this so I can get the foreign mercenary so I get my third tech I don't have to do this though I can wait till next round because entirely new techs are gonna come out I don't want to become a mining magnet particularly because I know if I do that Jen will send her three over here and it'll block me and I'll only get three chances to use this although the wait that's not true remember I can go wherever I've been blocked because I've got the tram yes that's fine okay I'm gonna do it um, this is a level four I'm kind of wasting the power of my building there. I'm just going to get this level three tech because it'll make it easier for me to get um, uh, to get copper, which is handy dandy. Uh, because hey, I would like to complete these uh, because that's two points, one and a for, uh, foreign good, six points and a foreign good. I haven't talked about foreign goods yet. Uh, as you can see, you can get them for various and sundry ways. A foreign good at the end of the game is worth one. But if you can get it cleared through customs by sending your workers here, it gets flipped, and then it's worth four points. And either way, whether it's been cleared or not through customs, you can use it um, at the church, and you can use it at the port as a resource if you need to. I'm just not that excited. No, I'm just not excited about either of these technologies. I'm not going to do it. I instead am going to. I'm totally broke. I'm broke, yo. Uh, and hey, here's a bank. I think I'm just going to visit the bank and get 3 yen. Because I don't want to be um, kept flat-footed. And Jen's like, no! She was going to go to the bank because she needed just a little bit more cash. Um, no, actually, wait. No, no, no. I'm sorry. The first house we build only costs four. Jen does have enough cash to build a trade house. Right, right, right. But she doesn't... If she, mm, ah, that's a problem though. That's a problem. See, if she could have completed this, 
then she would have uh, she could inc her level four worker could be turned into a level five, and then with a level five she could get an extra bonus. But if she with her if she does her level four, she can build a trade house. That'll be good enough. It'll be a shame not to have gotten any of these power bonuses. Ah, they're just sitting there waiting for us to take it. All right. So I've gone to the bank. Jen is blocked. So where is she going to go? Well, after all that, she could go to the copper mine <laughs> and get one copper for the two copper she needs. But now she has to refill everything. She has no tea. She has no uh, that. She can't get the money. Now, there is something else she could do. There is something else she could do. I think Jen, she's feeling a little pious. Or, or maybe she sinned a little and she needs to go confess her sins. I don't know. I don't know which church this is. You can see there's a cross for Christianity on it. So I'm assuming that's, again, part of the historical record that all these foreign countries they brought... Um, the uh, Christian church as well. Jen's going to go to the church with a power of three. That means she has three faith that she can spend. Um, basically, she's you know making donations or donating the time of her assistance uh, to be able to get these. Now, you can see the cheapest one costs four, um, which is uh, not enough. But... When you, I mean, in the same way that you can spend money or import goods to pump up the power of your guys when they're going to get tech, you can give up goods. You can donate to the church to increase the strength. You can donate a yen or you can donate anything. Now, I think Jen will donate this other silk. The silk she went and got originally, she's going to donate this. So that's four strength. That means she can get the weakest church card, which is worth one point at the end of the game. But hey, it just got her the extra power card she needs so she can do a level five action before this round is over. Noise, noise, noise. Okay. So, um, and I mean, this will be worth a point at the end of the game. So she just keeps this. And if she gets one more church card, she'll uh, attract the uh, help of a foreign mercenary. I think these are really foreign investors. I mean, this guy doesn't look like a mercenary. I think that's maybe a poor translation from the original Japanese. I don't know. Or maybe it's reflective of the Japanese culture's view of these outsiders coming in and they're mercenaries just working for the highest industrial bidder. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so Jen has donated um, some silk. So now she's got cash, but she's almost goods poor. I'm kind of uh, back. And the uh, round is... Oh, 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 oh. And that was a level four action. Which means, a level 5 action, she can't get these. But a level 4 action, Jen could build a building. She has 4 yen. If she builds a trade house here, that'll be 5 points at the end of the game. If anybody ever goes to the church, she will make money every time they visit. And she has plus 1 power. If Jen builds a trade house there, she's going to want to go religion crazy for the rest of the game. And definitely contribute more to that church. <laughs> But here's the thing. Jen knows for her last action, she's got a four plus this one she's got. So she's going to do a five. So, and she could build this at that point instead. And, um, hmm. Yeah, so she'd do it at that point instead and uh, build someplace else. Someplace she might want to go more. <sighs> like, say, a copper mine. If her last action is copper and she builds this, it'll be so much easier for her to get copper for the rest of the game. Remember, copper is hard to get. She's kind of given up on this getting bonus copper. Oh, that's not true. Jen could come here with her level four and get this still. And the interesting thing is, when we go into the second round, Jen will be first. So she'd be first out of the gate, although she'll be first with her little lousy level one. Um, plus one for her, the trade house she'd build would only be two. It wouldn't be enough. But she has an extra power. Oh, ah. No, I think um, you know, Jen has found religion. She is going to take advantage of the fact she did a level 4 action here. She's going to spend all of her yen and build her first trade house there. All right. And so from now on, she wants to keep giving until it hurts, uh, which will give her more points, more bonuses. And remember, the second time she does it, she'll get a foreign mercenary. All right. So that was it. Jen has completed an order. Jen has donated to the church. Jen has one piece of technology. All right. And this is it. We're at the end of the round. Here's my big, fat level 4. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? If I get my last piece of tech, I can get my foreign mercenary, and then I could use him immediately to do another action before the round is over. And remember, he could go anywhere. But you know what? Here's what I haven't done. Um, once per round, during area activation, I can activate a used area. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the power of my tram to... Um, I could go to the bank and get more cash. I could come here to the church. But if I go to the church, I don't want to go to the church anymore because Jen will get money out of the supply. I am going to get that silk that Jen tried to block me from. 
one, and it's four. One, two, three, four, four silk. I am loaded. And remember, because I've got that, uh, oh, I forget, it was the spinning yarn, that, or the, uh, the, the, the yarn spinner, that lets me convert these directly into money. And um, before my turn is over, well, that was a level four action, folks. It's not a level five. And I cannot pump this up because I don't have any bonus powers, but a level four means I can build a little house. Boom, that's worth a point. It only costs me one. And it means I'm better at gathering silk in the future. I'll go with that. And I've still got some money left over. All right, that was it for me. Jen's final turn. He's a level four. Uh-uh. Wherever he's going, he's a level five. This is going to be our first power bonus of the game. Where is Jen going to go? The sad thing is, wherever Jen goes, um, she won't be able to build a building because she's broke. If she could go to the bank, she could come here and get five bucks, and then she could build there, but she's totally broke because she built. Um, so that's kind of a pain. And it's a pain, too, because it would have been great. The order is you do the step, then you do get the power bonus, then you build. If there was a power bonus card out that had money, like this one, if this were out, wherever Jen went and she did a level five, she could take this and get two bucks, and then she could immediately use that money to build. And, and do some more building, but it's not, that's not, that was not in the literal cards. So what is Jen going to do instead? She, well, she can't come back here, uh, which is too bad, because it'd be a, a five plus one is six. She could get her second church card and get a foreign mercenary. Does she want to get either of these texts before they go away? I mean, this is overkill, sending a level five. Does she want to get a bunch of resources? What uh, Does she want to go to customs? No, she has no import goods. She can get a ton of fish. Um, with four, with five, you know what? You know what? Jen's going to send her five up to the copper mine at long last. He's a four plus one is five. That gets Jen three copper. All right. She's got four copper. That's crazy. She is definitely going to want to go to the port and get some more... Um, uh, jobs to use this copper because while copper is very hard to get uh, at the end of the day it's worth the same in, in the you know each of these resources is worth a third of a point at the end of the game so if you don't use them you lose them and um, donating copper to the church is no better than donating um, tea which is you know uh, super cheap or easy so Jen is definitely gonna have to go to the port if we go to the port the uh, greater your power the more port cards you get to draw although you only get to keep one but if you have money or import goods you can keep a second one so, um, right. But in the meantime, Jen went there. She's done a level five power. So the second step is power bonus step. So if she'd gotten a level six or seven, she could get the first or and second or the first, second, and third, uh, you know, if she had a level six or a level seven action, but she's only level five. So this will get her some um, silk or an order. Although unfortunately, she just has to draw a blind and take whatever she gets, as opposed to coming down here where you draw multiples and take one, or she can get an import good. Mm. And an import good, you can go to the customs, flip it, that's four points. Or if you don't flip it, you can use it to donate to the church. Although it's the same, I mean, you know, tea is the most, e is the easiest thing to collect. Um, and, uh, you know, everything's equal in the eyes of the church. Oh, there's an interesting thing I forgot to mention. Jen only donated one thing to hit the level she wanted to hit. If she wanted to donate multiple things, they'd have to be different. The church always wants donations of multiple different types of stuff. Right. So. Um, right, Jen got her copper, and I think does she want. If she just takes an order, then she won't have to waste time going to the port. I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to tra trade in this. And again, if she'd gotten level six, she'd get this and a buck. If she got level seven or higher, she'd get two orders in. But she's just going to draw a blind, and um, hope, hope for the best. And what does she got? Okay, something that needs some copper and some fish. This will just give her a buck which is useful in the short term and some points in the long term. So Jen has got another order to fulfill. And remember, orders, it does not take an extra film. You just do it for free whenever you've got the resources. And Jen's got all the copper she needs for both of these. So she's looking at eight points there and uh, imported good and another power and another dollar. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, a new one comes out. There's always three on offer. Ooh, a double fish. All right. So we have finished the first of four rounds, the first of four years in Yokohama. And at the end of the round, we do a little bit of cleanup. Any of these texts that nobody wanted? Buh bye bye No one cares. Five new texts are going to come out. 
Uh, oh, actually, wait, no. Before we do that, I think that's the last thing that happens. First thing that happens is everybody gets their workers back. All right, that's for me. And you have to be careful. Remember, these are two-sided. So don't accidentally flip them when you're taking them back. That's important. All right, everybody gets their workers back. And now everybody gets to pay to upgrade one worker of their choosing. All except for Jen. Since Jen's got some good university teaching, she will get to do it for free. And so rather than paying three bucks to upgrade her level four to a level five, she'll do it for free. She just saved three bucks. So now going to the next round, she will play her single, her double, her triple, and then her level five. And meanwhile, me, I got two bucks. So, I mean, my I could change my level one to a level two for free, or I could change my level two to a level three for one, or my level three to a level four for two. What were my techs? My techs were, oh, I'm, I know I'm gonna get more money from all this silk. So I think with that in mind, yeah, let's go on ahead and pay big. I'll pay both the silk I've got to turn this three into a four. So that means going into the second round, I've got a one, two, four, and four. All right. I'd rather have a five like Jen, but, um, you know, okay. My technologies are available again. Boopity boop. Nice. And now the new techs come out. What do we got? We've got the stock exchange or stock market, which, um, oh, this is super nice. At the beginning of every turn, if you have zero or one yen, you get a yen for free. That's every turn not every round. That means you're always got money, so you can always afford to build one of your little buildings. Um, okay, for each flipped import token, they're worth two extra points. So they go from being worth four to being worth six points. So you get that, you want to chase after import goods. And let's see, oh, we've got the stagecoach once per round during an area action. You can activate a used area where one of your trading houses is. So this is a less powerful version of my tram, which is why it costs two instead of four. So Jen could always use her church because she's got a trading house there, even if it's been blocked out. Even if she's gone there with this stagecoach, she could go there a second time. And remember, she's found that religion. All righty. Um, what else we got? We've got the postal system. Once per round, uh, during your area action, choose any power card to use. Oh, so that means you can skip your lousy, crappy low-level ones and go straight to your high-level ones once per round. And finally, uh, the printing press. Whenever you get technology, get two bucks. Now, that would be much nicer in the first round. Because if I could have gotten that first, then I would have gotten two bucks for the second one. Jen, that's interesting to her, though, because she's only got one. If she gets this and another one, um, oh, that could be very nice. Okay, so that stuff has come out. Also, at the end of the round, turn order changes. So Jen was the last player in round one. She's the first player in round two with her little dinky level one, ready to go out on the town and um, you know continue to strive. Jen would like to get one fish to complete this, to get an extra buck so that she could build more stuff since she's broke. Um... But, oh, man, that tech. Oh, that tech. Can't you smell that tech? But the problem is, Jen sends her level one over here. She doesn't have a house. She doesn't have a, a power card. She doesn't have any money. She doesn't have any trade goods. Sending a level one here will do nothing for her. Sending a level one won't do much of anything anywhere. I think it kind of makes sense. Jen's just going to go to the stinky fishing ground and get a single fish. And then when she is done after that, as a bonus action, she will um, spend two copper and a thing and fulfill her second order, which it gives her one yen. So now she can start building again, or uh, she needs a second yen to be able to pump up in the lab, though. And remember, if she completes one more order, she will get that foreign um, investor or foreign mercenary. Which again, they're super powerful. All right, so that was it for Jen. My little dinky level one. I have no money! What? Oh, what? I forgot about that part. All right, yes, I do have money anytime I want. And these free actions you can do before or after any of these steps. You can't interrupt a step. But before I'm doing anything, I'm going to use my spinning mill and get rid of some of my silk and get two yen yo. Two yen yo. And with that, I can send my dinky level one to the lab, pump him up with that two yen I got from selling my silk. And, um, right, well, I can get a level two now. Uh, which means the stock exchange, which is just the free money, making money, or the stagecoach to go a blocked place, or the printing press, getting two bucks whenever I get a tech. This is going to be my third technology. I think I might not get a fourth technology because the interesting thing is your fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh technology gets more expensive. Your first three, uh, you just have to have the power. After that, in addition to get your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, however many more you want, you always have to spend two yen or a trade good to be able to get more. 
So I think I'm just going to get a stock exchange, which means on my next turn, since I've got no money, I'm going to make money. Yeah. Oh, I love these ideas that these uh, foreign cultures are bringing to the country. Nice, nice, nice. That was my first action. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now it is Jen's second action, and she's got her double man. And right, she needs two silk. She needs a T to complete this. Uh, um... She, uh, or a level two, could go and get her the warehouse, the warehouse, which means she could do the church twice in a round. Once and then twice. Or if I block, um, you know, Jen could do it again. Hmm. Wow. That's pretty nice. And remember, also, when we go to the church, and when anybody goes to the church, Jen makes money off that. If Jen wants some more money, she could send her level two there right now. Although, what she'd have to do is she'd have to send her level two. Oh, no, she needs to, to donate at least six. So that's not happening. She's going to have to use her higher level guys to make a donation. What is she going to do? What is she going to do? You know what, folks? I'm not quite sure what she's going to do, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the ebb and the flow of Yokohama Duel. I mean, we still got a long ways to go and a lot more strategizing to do. The texts that become available can change everything. Um, do you focus on church? Do you focus on um, you know building? Because these are worth a lot of points. Do you focus on getting these import goods and then going to the customs house to flip them to turn them into a lot of points? There's a lot of ways to go and not much time to do it. Four years, four turns each time. That's 16 turns um, to score big in Yokohama Duel. And that's the run through, folks. Now, if you'd like to hear what Jen I thought of the game, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.